Hi everyone, this is Weemaster DS here. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to install and use the 1.5 kernel add-on for PSP custom firmwares. Now what it actually does is it allows your PSP to run Homebrew which was created for the 1.5 firmware, official firmware, which may not work now because the uh, firmware that you have, the custom firmware you have, is more new. So in order to download it you first need to go onto the website which I have provided on the video description and scroll down the website and you'll see many links, some which have custom firmware, some which have 1.5 kernel add-ons. Now because there are many 1.5 kernel add-ons, the one that you need to select is the one that matches your custom firmware. Now mine is 5M33, so I need to click on this link. And then you'll have this, which is shows your description and other information about the download. Then you need to click on the download link here. And then you'll say, do you want to open or save it? You'll need to save it or open it, whichever you prefer. I'll save it to my to a folder on my desktop. Here it is. Now what you need to do is you need to go inside that WinRAR archive. You need to double click on this folder here. And this folder here is what you'll need to drag onto your memory stick. Now in order to do that, you'll need to plug your PSP into your computer, either by using the USB cable and putting it in USB mode, or by sticking the memory stick inside your computer's media card slot. So we'll do that now. Okay, so what you need to do is make sure that your PSP is off, and then you need to take out the uh, memory stick. There's your memory stick. Then you need to put it in your corresponding media card slot. See, bottom one there, if I can, there we go. That's the memory stick, all pro or duo slot, so I'm gonna put in that one there. See? And there the lights started flashing to show that it's reading. Now once inserted, the memory stick will produce the autoplay window. And you'll need to click on the open folder to view files. Then you'll need to go to PSP. Go to Game5XX. You might not have this. If you haven't got it, you'll need to create it yourself. Then drag that to the side and you can drag the 150k installer folder into the memory stick game 5xx folder that's now copied onto there, no, no time at all now before we can run that and install it, we will need one more file so you can close this archive can um, keep that down, um, just, just keep that to the side for now and then what you need to do is go to the second link I've provided on my video description scroll down click on the 1.50 eboot download link then go down and click on download again and then you can either open or save if you want to, uh, you can, it's your choice. I'll just skip that ad quickly. I'm going to open it. And then, because mine, I've already downloaded it, so it won't take that long for me, but when you download it, it will take about a minute or so. So, just to let you know. Now, what you need to do is you'll need to, on the memory, on the Game 5XX folder, you need to back up twice. So, you're at the memory stick drive root. This, this bit here with all these folders here, we've got ISO, music, picture, etc. And you need to drag the eboot.pbp file into that folder. And that's now copied. And what you need to do is you need to click on it and rename it to 150.pbp. And then once that's done, that's it. You're ready to install your um, 1.5 kernel. Okay, so what you'll need to do is take out your memory stick and put it in your PSP. Then you can turn it on. And go down to uh, memory stick on the game, press X, and then go right to the bottom, and you'll see the 1.5 kernel add on for whatever custom firmware you're using. So press X on that to load it. And then it will say this right at the top here it will say press cross to begin the installation of the 1.5 subsets or press R to exit 
you know, say warning this will delete location free player Korean font and APOT now what that means is that when you install this it will overwrite the location free player and Korean font and the APOT so if you use any of those programs or if you use them just the um, best thing to do is not to install this kernel add-on otherwise you won't be able to use them anymore if you don't use them you can press X to start the installation of the uh, add-on first say reading 1.5 PSAR which is the 1.5150 PBP file which we put on our memory stick and it will say all this it's flashing all the uh, files required for it to run takes about a minute in total there we go not even a minute and then it will say done auto exiting in 7 seconds and it should restart ok now it's installed now currently you can't use it straight away you need to make sh tell the PSP that you want to use it but first of all I'll show you a case when it will be useful so right now I'll try running a game that I've got called Tile World or Chips Challenge now this this game was actually made for um, the 1.5 official firmware and it doesn't work properly as you see the game could not be started it doesn't work on later custom firmwares so what you need to do is turn off your PSP completely and then what you need to do is turn it back on and immediately hold the right shoulder button in and then what you'll get is you'll get the M33 recovery menu now what you need to do is go down to configuration press X then you need to go down to game folder homebrew and it will be currently set to the kernel that your custom firmware is in this case it's 5.xx you press X and it will be changed to 1.5 kernel if I highlight that for you there you see 1.5 kernel and then you can press back on the top then go to exit and it should resta restart your PSP If we try running the chip challenge again, it should work. There you go. Now, if I try running one of these, one of these files, there we go, the game works. I can play it. So that is what the 1.5 kernel add-on does. It allows you to play and you run Homebrew, which was created for 1.5 firmware. So if you install firmware, um, Homebrew, sorry, that was created for the. Um, if you run Homebrew and it doesn't work, basically, or it doesn't work properly, it might work, but it might not work properly. If it doesn't work properly, then the best option to do is to try and stick on the 1.5 kernel add-on and see if that does anything and if it does then you know that it was 1.5 firmware that it needed so that's the end of my video and I hope it's helped people who can't get some of their um, homebrew to work and I'll see you next time